Will my Cherokee 6 that I've put so much time, effort, and money into be grounded? I'm on my way to the hangar now to find out. To understand how and why, we need to back up a bit. In April 2018, a Piper Aero training airplane crashed when the left wing separated from the aircraft shortly after doing a touch and go, killing both occupants. The NTSB found that the crash was caused by extensive fatigue cracking in the left main wing spar. On many Piper airplane models, the wing spar, which is the main structural beam, so to speak, of the wing, is connected to the spar box in the fuselage. It attaches at the lower spar with a series of bolts. The investigation found that the lower outboard hole had a fatigue crack. The NTSB concluded that due to flight training maneuvers, lots of low altitude flying, and lots of landings per flight hour, the airplanes probably experienced more severe loads than usual, and the resulting stress cycles probably caused the fatigue crack to develop. But eventually, the FAA issued an airworthiness directive, which basically mandates that certain Piper airplanes have to have the bolt holes inspected using an eddy current test, which can detect cracks using magnetic fields. The FAA wants planes that have high airframe time, basically those that have been flown a lot in either a flight training environment or a commercial operation like hauling cargo, to be checked out because these are the most likely to have faced similar conditions as the accident airplane. Airplanes in these environments are required to have 100 hour inspections. So the FAA came up with a formula based on the number of 100 hour inspections a plane has had, along with its total time in service, to determine which planes are required to be inspected. My plane was a heavy used cargo hauler carrying checks, medical equipment, and medical samples all over the eastern United States. Before we rehabbed it, it looked like it had been ridden pretty hard. We did a big cosmetic renovation on it and overhauled the engine. I spent countless hours and days planning all the details and upgrades, and my buddy Don did so much fantastic work making the plane so awesome. We also put in a pretty fancy glass cockpit and autopilot system. We've had so many amazing adventures in this plane, and it's felt like we were really just getting started. But of course, that wing spar is still original. The plane has over 11,000 total hours. So I spent a day looking over the logbooks, counting all the 100 hour inspections and running the formula from the AD. I calculated over 8,000 factored service hours, far exceeding the 5,000 factored hour threshold spelled out in the AD. My plane is a prime example of the type of plane the directive is targeting. So what's at stake here? If the plane passes the inspection, it can continue to fly but if the inspector detects even the tiniest of cracks on the bolt holes, the plane is grounded and will most likely need an entirely new wing spar for each wing that fails. The FAA estimates this to cost around at least $13,000 per wing, which is a super optimistic estimate. And that's assuming you can even find a wing spar for a Cherokee 6 because they're not making them anymore and the salvage wings are being snapped up by others who are failing the test. Lately, I've been forced to think a lot about what will happen if the plane fails this test and it's caused me to realize what a big part of our lives aviation has become and how it's really brought us together as a family on so many great adventures and taught me so much about life in general through challenging situations. And this little adventure is no different. Sometimes you don't realize what you've got until it's gone, or in this case, almost gone. It's another aviation metaphor for you. I've been dreading having to get this inspection done, but it's time. I coordinated all the necessary people and prepped the plane for the inspection pulling the seats to expose the spar, and applying penetrating oil to soak in overnight on the bolts and nuts. Don't get that stuff in your eye. My mechanic pulled the four bolts and I ordered replacement ones. I couldn't sleep the night before. The day had come to see what the fate of my beloved airplane would be. Okay, here we go. Jim Hofer from Aerohoff Inspection Services came to my hangar to do the inspection. He explained a little about how the eddy current test works. So the way eddy current works in a nutshell, is you have a coil, send AC current through that coil, it creates a magnetic field opposition to that. So what I'm really doing is bringing a magnetic field, a reversing magnetic field to a conductive material, aluminum. It's going to create currents around that magnetic field, which are circular currents or eddy currents. That's where they get the term circular current or eddy current. So those eddy currents are going to create magnetic fields itself around that, around that circular field. And that magnetic field opposes the inducing magnetic field that I'm bringing into the part. I'm going to come across a crack. It's going to go up just like it's going to get suppressed on the one side. But then I go over the crack back on the good material so it goes back down. So on the screen, it's going to look like a phase shift. That's key of telling you what a crack is going to look like. He also showed us the tiny cracks and notches the test can detect. 50 thousandths, 20 thousandths, 10 thousandths, and 5 thousandths depth. 
There's a 30 thousandths of an inch uh, EDM notch that goes away from the hole, 30 thousandths down, and it's cut at an angle. That's what the procedure tells us to set up to. And gave us a quick demo of a test hole. It's a nice flat screen right now because I'm on a nice polished hole and there's no scratches in there. When we, when we go across the crack, see I get my phase shift on the right and I get that W on the left. This is what we're looking for, this W and something in this phase on the impedance screen. If this signal goes 40% or higher, we have to reject it. For an even more in-depth look at the inspection and bonus content like a video series about my airplane's annual inspection, come on over to patreon.com slash SoCalFlyingMonkey and join our fast-growing community of pilots and aviation enthusiasts. We've got our own Discord chat server and do monthly Zoom hangouts. It was time for the moment of truth. Yeah. Okay, we've done 177 over the last two years and we've had eight failures, eight aircraft have failed. All eight airplanes have had crack-like indications on the uh, right forward hole in the wing spar at the lower surface. Okay, so here's the left forward hole. Oh man, your spar is clean, it's flat -lined. No scratching at all. Out the hole. Wow, that looks really good. Hopefully they're all like that. Here's the left, going in the hole. Right there, you see that's the interface right there, so I'm at the lower surface of the spar. That's a key area where we see a lot of indications. Now I'm coming out of that, into, now I'm out of the hole at the top surface, coming down, in the doubler, in the wing spar, right there, lower surface of the wing spar, and then out the hole. So your left side pass, it looks good. The left side pass. <laughs> that's good. Okay, this is the key one right here. This so let's see what we got. Right forward hole. Entering the hole. Lower surface of the spar. Right there is the key area. Looks great. No indications. Working my way up the spar. Out the doubler and out the hole. Coming back down. In the doubler. In the wing spar. Lower surface and out the hole. Looks good. Your forward hole. Looks great. One more. One more hole. Working our way in. And out the hole, coming back down. Double wing spar. Lower and out. You passed. Is that that, that quick? Thanks, Yours is clean, really clean. I'm so relieved. It's awesome. I learned a lot too, which is really cool. The rest is all paperwork. Okay. Well, that is such a huge relief that one Bravo Whiskey passed the bolt hole eddy current inspection. I know I learned a lot from this process. I hope you guys did too. And I'm gonna be flying one Bravo Whiskey with a lot more confidence now that I know that the wing spar is in really good shape. I'm gonna be flying the family around. I can't wait to get back to flying and making some more awesome flying videos. As always, thanks for coming along on the journey with me. You did such a good job. Yeah.